Being a beginner to 3D printing, I was very excited to see what I could achieve out of the box with very limited experience. Welcome to Dartside Scenics and this review of the PyoCreate Halote X1. So PyoCreate very kindly sent me the full bundle for review, but obviously all of the opinions are my own. Along with the 3D printer itself, there was also an auto feed unit, a wash and cure machine, and also two bottles of UV curable resin. PyoCreate is a subsidiary of Creality and a specialist in industrial 3D printing. Out of the box, the printer feels really well made, of nice quality, and has a build volume of 211 by 118 by 200 millimeters. Once the printer is switched on, the setup is fairly straightforward with the usual options at the start. It then requests you to set up your Wi-Fi so you can print via the network. Next it gives you a basic help guide uh, and a few tips which helps you to start printing straight away. However, before you start, the most important thing is to go to the settings and the firmware updates to ensure you're on the latest version. After the update, I was able to connect my mobile phone to the Creality Cloud via the QR code. This will allow me to print cloud files at a later date. The auto feed unit which sits alongside the printer is a very useful addition, especially for beginners. It can feed resin in and out, heat it to the required temperature and also detect exactly how much it needs. This is based on using the Halot branded resin which has a tag in the bottom of the bottle which simplifies the entire process. The auto feed unit is connected to the printer via a USB cable and a hose for the resin. The pack includes a feed tube and a replacement lid, which then connects to the hose on the auto feed unit. The resin vat has two large handles, which makes it very easy to remove. This means you won't be able to accidentally close the lid unless the vat is locked in place. As I'm using the auto feed unit, I need to remove this small piece of plastic so I can install the detection unit. The resin hose connects to the left of the detection unit and the power cable to the right. When the resin vat is back in place, the detection unit can be moved onto the vat, ready for printing. And by going into the settings and the auto feed unit option, you can see everything's connected and ready to go. So here's my setup and I'm ready to do my first print. Although I can network print, I decided the best place to start would be the test file included on the USB stick. In the print control section, you can turn on automatic feeding and feed heating. When you press start, the build plate locks in place and then the auto feed unit does its job by filling the vats with the required amount of resin. This printer introduces a new system where the resin vat moves up and down rather than the build plate and this is designed to improve print stability and reduce layer lines. 
Another advantage is that no leveling is necessary, which is easier than a lot of other printers which do need manual leveling. This is a seven hour print with over 2000 layers. So I've just taken some short video footage during the process. It's important to point out that during this process there will be resin fumes, so you need to be in a well ventilated area and if you do need to enter the room, use a good quality respirator. Now that printing is complete, I've decided to manually drain the resin rather than use the feed out system and this is basically because I was quite impatient to get started and um, have a look at the print. As mentioned before, the vat is unclipped using the two levers on the side and then the detection unit also needs to be moved to the clip on the rear. I forgot to use one of the filters here when I was pouring the resin back into the bottle, so that's something I'll have to remember next time. Now the drip tray is in place, I just need to slide out the build plate and release it using the handles. This twist to release build plate is a unique design which should minimise the need for scraping the build plate when releasing the models. It's a good idea at this point to wipe off the excess resin from the build plate and give it a thorough clean with isopropyl alcohol. The first step after printing is to wash the model using the wash and cure machine. Some resin is water washable but I believe the majority of machines use isopropyl alcohol. I'm opting for the 5 minute wash on the wash and cure machine. Although the supports are still attached to the model, I thought it would be a good idea to wash it at this stage to remove most of the excess resin. This model has quite a lot of supports and I took a while to remove them all as I was nervous about breaking it, but as you can see all of the supports are removed and the model is unscathed. Next the water tank is removed and the curing platform is added to the machine. Once the lid is back on, I change it over to the cure function and set it for 5 minutes. Lots of people will paint directly onto these models, but I prefer to spray them with primer first. For my first resin 3D print, I'm really impressed with the results and I look forward to painting it. I don't have a lot of experience in painting fantasy or Warhammer figures, but this was actually really enjoyable. I started off with some base colours and then added some metallics. When all the paint is dry, I use the dry brushing technique to really highlight the details. The base has been painted but it just needs a small amount of static grass to finish it off. The model is glued to the base using PVA and left to dry. And here's the finished project. Although it was the inbuilt test model and you expect it to go smoothly, I was still very impressed on how quickly it came together and how good the detail was. So now I've done the easy bit, I need to look at the slicer software and also at downloading some models from the internet. The USB stick provided includes the Hallot Box software and also a 3 month trial of Chitu Box Pro. I decided to make the most of the free trial of Chitu Box Pro, so registered for an account. Once in the program you'll be able to select the Hallot X1 from the menu and then you'll see the very recognisable build plate on your homepage. When looking for something to print I went to the ModelU website as they offer a STL download service for certain models. 
Once downloaded, I can drag the STL files directly into the Chitubox software. You can see here on the build plates that there are a lot of areas not being used. This is why the Hamlet X1 has 92 independent zones, which means it only activates the zones needed. Here's a close up of the laser on the detection unit calculating the correct amount of resin to be used. The models are released from the build plate, washed and as you can see here they're back on the curing machine for 5 minutes. After a quick spray of primer you can see here the detail has come out really well. These figures are approximately 40mm high. When each figure is painted and dry, I give it a coat of black wash to pick out the details. Finally, I use the dry brushing technique to highlight all of the lines and the details. I also printed these smaller figures which were approximately 20mm high. These types of models are ideal for dioramas, model railways and diecast models like these. Finally, I wanted to download something from Printables and I found these really amazing dragon models from this creator, MZ4250. It was free to download and very easy to get into the Box software. The dragon was imported as a standalone file, but Box has an auto support option so it adds all of these support struts. The model looks really good and although I had a slight problem releasing it from the build plate, I think this is due to the fact I didn't clean it properly with isopropyl alcohol after the last print. After removing the supports, washing and then curing, I was really happy with the results. I gave it a quick coat of paint and although it probably needs some more detail, I'll revisit it at a later date. In summary, the printer's great, it was easy to set up and I got some fantastic prints with very limited experience. I think the more I use it and the more I get used to the slicer software, the more I'll get out of it. As a beginner, the auto feed unit is perfect as it takes away a lot of the uncertainty regarding how much resin to use. It's also a lot tidier the way it feeds the resin in and feeds it out again. I don't think the wash and cure machine is part of the current bundle on the Creality store, but it is something you'll need to factor into your budget because the resin models do need washing and curing. I think I'll stick with the Halot resin when I need to replace it as it makes it slightly easier with the auto feed. With the software, I will continue to use Chitubox while the trial is still available. I'll see how I feel at the time, but I'm not sure I really want to pay the amount they require for the yearly subscription, so I'll probably move back to the Halot Box software, which is free. I hope you found the review interesting, and I'll put some more information in the description. Thanks for watching.